The Promised Neverland is an amazing show, at least based off these first three episodes, which I'm going to spoil in this video. There's your warning. From the very start, you can tell that something is going to go wrong. There's a very, like, foreboding tone around everything. The first clip is them at the gate, wondering what is on the other side. And Ray even saying that what they are told about that is a lie. But you don't know quite what. There's also this innocence about the characters, especially Emma, who I love already. She is a great main character, especially for a show like this, but I'll get to her a bit more later. Then after the scene of the gate, you see like the lawn and the orphanage, and in a way it seems like a very happy and joyous place. But there's something off here. There's like the shadows in the foreground which tell you that there is something dark coming. And then you see the numbers on Emma and the others. You know that this isn't normal. And one of the things I love so much about the first episode is its foreshadowing and, and irony with some of the dialogue. I saw the first episode twice. The first when it came out, and then again tonight when I was watching the other two episodes. And there's so many little things that I picked up on which are just so great. They added so much to it on the rewatch. I like you have Emma chasing the other kids, saying that she is going to eat them, playing with them. But you know, if you've seen episode one, that the kids are going to be eaten. And just, ah, uh, I love how they take something innocent and make it something horrifying. You also have the caretaker, the mother, praying, thank you for the food. And then, you zoom in on the kids' numbers. She's not talking about the food they are eating, but the food that they will become. Then you move on to them answering the questions and just how uncanny it all feels. Uh, this is, it's so great. And then again with the like tragic foreshadowing, Connie saying that you are right. And then you have Don promising to always help Connie whenever she needs it. I think we're going to get back to that quote later on in the series. And then you also have like Norma saying that he wants to see things he'll never see before when he gets outside. But then Ray saying that he'd have to survive first. Again, so much foreshadowing. And I love the foreboding music when they're talking about the outside. Just how much it adds to it. Like, you know that this is not a happy discussion about the future. But a tragic one, at least looking back on it. And I just love all the emotions, especially as they cross through the gate and are trying to find Connie and see what's going on. Like when Emma first sees Connie, like how terrified he is, how broken he is. I called Emma a guy. I'm going to probably do that a lot. But you see how terrified she is at this. And I love the direction here, how we don't see Connie at first, but see Emma in Ray's reaction. Not Ray, Norma. By the way, I'm doing this without a script. Kind of improv. So, yeah. So we see Emma and Norman and their reactions before we cut to Connie and just how gruesome that is. And again, I love Emma as a character. She has hope. She wants to find a way to save everyone. And in episode two, you see that she is crying, not for herself or the fear that she's going to be killed, but for all the people that she loves here, her family. And I also love all the mental uh, games between a mother and the kids, them trying to hide what they know, her trying to find out, and later on in episode 3, you see that she is after something more, too, though we don't quite know what it is. A great example of this is when one of the kids goes missing. The mother pulls out a tracking device to find her, and she pulls it out in front of everyone. She is not hiding her capability, but she wants the kids to know it. She doesn't know exactly who it was that saw her, at least I don't think so, though maybe she does. And that's another thing, too. I love how we don't know. We don't know exactly what she knows. We're like the kids trying to figure this out. And I like how the kids are very intelligent here. They state that Emma, Norma, and Ray have the highest test scores, so it makes sense that they would be smart. And I like that we see them asking the questions that I'm asking. Like, why are they going after the kids? What's on the outside? And all that. Or even asking if they are being tracked, if there are cameras or microphones hidden beyond that. I also love the effects of the music. Another scene where this worked wonderfully was when they were talking to Ray, trying to convince him to help Emma and Norman. And there's this very hopeful music as Emma keeps saying that she was going to find a way to save everyone, despite how foolish it was. And the music really added to that effect. You can definitely tell that this is a shonen anime. And I love shonen anime. Like, my favorite anime of all time are My Hero Academia and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. 
Like, yes, I am a Shonen fan. So Emma's mindset of wanting to save everyone. A bit naive, yes, but still trying to find a way. That's so inspiring. Will she succeed, though? Probably not. And that is going to be something interesting to see, too, is when she fails. Because, like, they brutally killed Connie. I'm pretty sure that won't be the last time this happens. And then they introduce a new character, a new caretaker by Crone, who is very messed up in some ways. And I think this is very interesting because the kids might have a way to like use a crone to get away from their mother. And Crone even tells Emma that if Emma saw the whatever that was called when they took Connie away, that Crone is on their side. Is that a lie? Is that the truth? What will Emma do with that information? That is another really interesting thing. And there's also, at the end of episode 3, how Ray suspects there's a traitor among the kids. Someone spying for the adults. This is a great twist because it is destroying Emma's trust in her family. Like, she loves everyone. She wants to take care of these kids, find a way to save them all. But maybe she can't. She can't trust them anymore. Ah, I want to see where this goes. Also, kind of forgot this when I first recorded, but there are a couple things that Promise Neverland does that differentiates it from the rest of Shonen anime. The first is the fact that the main character, Emma, is a girl. I can't think of any other shonen anime, or at least not big ones, that have a female main character. So, I think that's cool. Another thing that I like is how young the characters are. The main ones being 11 years old, and the rest of the cast, other than the adults, being even younger. There is a time where it seemed like there would be a lot of anime that would show a kid around 11 years old or so go through something terrible, and then have a time skip to when they're older. While I get why the shows were doing these things, it felt like I was kind of cheated at the story of how a kid dealt with that and moved on and fought against the evil or whatever. That's like Attack on Titan, what it did there. Black Bullet did something similar, and I'm sure there are others, but I can't think of them right now. I also like how, at least so far, the characters don't have any superpowers. Like, there are a lot of shows that start off with the main character not having anything, like My Hero Academia, Black Clover, to be the main ones, but then they get powers a few episodes in, and they end up becoming one of the strongest in the world. Or at least that's what I'm assuming will happen with Black Clover. Haven't seen much of it yet. But he has the five Clover things, so yeah, he's kind of the strongest, sort of, kind of. I don't know. What am I saying? So I really hope that Promise Neverland will keep this up. Have the characters not have powers, making it the only thing that they can fight with is their minds, figuring out ways to outsmart the demons. So yeah, I'm making this video to talk about how awesome Promise Neverland is and to tell you to go watch it. Except, I don't think you should go watch it. At least not right now. It is an awesome show. But it is not one that I feel that I would enjoy most waiting week to week for it. In fact, I think it's one that I'd want to watch it all in like two days. Maybe even a single day. That would be really fun. <laughs> that would be crazy. There are some anime that are just so fun to like marathon a ton at once. And I think Promise Neverland is one of them. So, in conclusion, Promise Neverland is awesome. Especially if you're a fan of the shonen and suspense and horror, sort of. But it is not a good one to watch weekly, and I'm kind of regretting that I got caught up tonight. <laughs> Whatever. Go watch this, but when it is done. And I will see you all next time. Unless I come up with something else as I am editing this video.